Hello, and thank you for stopping by the 741 channel. Today's project is going to be to replace the pitman arm, the idler arm, and the inner and outer tie rods on this 2004 Chevy Tahoe. This procedure should be applicable for many GM full-size trucks and SUVs, such as the Silverado, the Tahoe, the Suburban, uh, the GMC Yukon, the GMC Sierra, and uh, even the Cadillac Escalade, and you know various others that I'm not thinking of right now. But as always, uh, make sure that you're following the correct procedures and getting the right parts for your particular vehicle. These vehicles are all very similar, but there are subtle differences between them. And Before I get started, I just want to mention a couple of things. First of all, you'll notice I've got the truck outside. Now, I've got a garage right over here, but I can't work in the garage right now because the driveway was just freshly paved two days ago, and I can't drive on the pavement for another five days or so. Another thing I'll mention is that you may notice I've got the truck jacked up right now. I've got it braced on jack stands and I've got some plywood under the jack stand so it doesn't sink into the ground. If this is something that you're going to attempt yourself, whether you're doing it in a garage or outside like I am, if you're going to be uh, jacking the truck up and working from the underneath uh, without a lift, you want to make sure that you brace your truck properly, use correct jack stands and that kind of a thing. Uh, you certainly don't want a vehicle falling on you and you're going to be in there pulling and pushing so you want to make sure the thing is uh, sturdy and secure. Um, so any liability in this matter is all your own and if you're not familiar with working on cars and being under them and bracing them uh, you should get some help or just take it to a garage and uh, have it done by a professional. Okay so let's take a look at uh, what's going on here. So you may be able to see on this tire that the outer edge of it is worn quite a bit more than the center or inner edge of the tire. And that's sort of a telltale sign of front end problems right there. Now another uh, clue to tip you off as to what might be going on here is with the vehicle jacked up and the wheel off the ground, you can see here that I'm able to shake this back and forth and you can hear it clunking. Now this one's quite loose. There's a lot of play in there. Um, and that's also a telltale sign of a bad tie rod or ball joint or something along those lines. One last thing I'll mention before I start taking the wheels off and getting going on this project is that I've gone ahead and sprayed down all of the nuts and fittings and things that I'm going to be taking off on this truck with PB Blaster. And I've done that a couple of times. I started, well, even maybe about two weeks ago uh, got under there and just squirted everything down and let it soak in and did that uh, every three or so days uh, up until now to uh, just kind of help break up some of the rust that's going to be under here and just hopefully make things a little bit easier to remove. So now that I've got the wheels off, I've got some room to uh, see things under here. The first thing that I'm going to tackle is to change the pitman arm and that is located right in here. It'll probably be uh, better if I crawl under the truck, but you can kind of get uh, an idea of where it is based on where the brake rotor is. It's up here, kind of just on the other side of the frame rail and connects between the center link and the steering box, which is bolted to the frame rail here. So now we're under the truck and we're taking a look here. You can see this is the pitman arm here and there's the taper and ball joint of it here. And this goes through the center link and this bolt here is what holds it on to the center link. And then on the other side, up behind, I guess this is a torsion bar or a sway bar or something, there is a nut. You may not be able to see it because the bar is in the way, but this nut will need to be removed and this is the end that's going to be the problem. This is the one that's connected to the steering box. Now before I tackle removing the bolts that hold the pitman arm on, I'm going to first remove this skid plate. This Tahoe is a Z71 model, so it's got this skid plate. Uh, I'm just going to get this out of the way. I'm not sure if it's exactly in the way. There might be room to work around it, but I think it'll be easier to just get it out of here. There's just four bolts holding it on, two back there and sort of two in the front. And the other thing that I'll do, and again, I don't think this is really going to be in the way, but I think I'm going to take it off anyway, is this plastic air dam. I'm just going to take this off. Also four bolts two down here and then two up here behind the bumper. 
So I'm going to use this impact gun, and this is overkill for these bolts, I'm sure. But I'm trying to exercise this thing and see if it actually works. It hasn't been used in a number of years, and uh, we may need it further on in the project here. So, I don't know. Let's just see if it works. So it seems like the impact gun worked okay on the skid plate bolts, but again, those probably weren't in real tight, so I would expect that they would be okay. I'm going to use a regular ratchet wrench on these last two bolts just because there's not enough room up here to get the impact gun on these. Let's take a quick look at what came off the truck. These five bolts are what were holding on the plastic uh, air dam, if you want to call it that. There was two in the back and three up in front underneath the bumper. So we'll set those aside and again those were all 15 millimeter head bolts. And then this is the skid plate here you can see and the back of the skid plate has these rubber bushings in it and these fasteners are what fit through the bushing. There's just a regular bolt there again with a 15 millimeter head and sort of this I'll call it a shoulder washer that goes up inside the bushing. This must just help this thing uh, from rattling and stuff. And then in the front, it was just held on with two uh, regular uh, bolts with 15 millimeter heads. Now that the skid plate and air dam are removed, you can get a better look at the pitman arm. This is the end here that bolts onto the steering box. You can see there's a rubber dust boot that's here that's partially up. Um, I pushed that up a couple days ago to spray some uh, PB blaster in here to kind of help uh, penetrate some of the rust. And then you can see there's a nut and a lock washer on here that holds it on. And then back there is the ball joint and taper and whatnot that goes into the center link. So I sprayed this down with a little bit more PB blast and then we'll let that soak in just for a few more minutes. I'm going to try and work on removing this nut. Uh, now I've got some large wrenches that I've inherited from a cousin who used to be a maintenance mechanic at a local uh, woolen mill. So I've got a 32 millimeter wrench, which would have been ideal, but it's just a little bit too small to fit on this. So instead, what I'm gonna use is a large adjustable wrench that I have also in my inherited collection from my cousin, and hopefully that'll be uh, good enough to remove this nut. There's not a lot of room here between the pitman arm and the frame rail, so options are limited. I do have some bigger sockets, but I can't get the socket or the ratchet on there. So I'm, like I said, I'm just gonna have to rely on this adjustable wrench. So we'll do this first and see what happens. Hopefully you guys can see what's going on. I had to switch cameras. The battery died on the other one. Anyhow, what I've got here is I've got my adjustable wrench and you may be able to see in the shot, maybe you can't, I've got another extension pipe on the end of the wrench. I had to get a whole bunch of leverage on this thing to get it off. I think I've got it loose now. Yep, it's turning now. I did round over the uh, points on the nut one time. The, the uh, wrench loosened up on me a little bit and it slipped. And I was starting to get worried I wouldn't be able to get this nut off. But uh, I figured I had nothing to lose at this point. So I gave it one more shot. had to really put all my weight into it and I uh, was able to get it loose. So now I should be able to get the pipe off the wrench here. It might be easier said than done. And then uh, I can just loosen this up the rest of the way with the wrench by itself. I got the nut off, so now I'm just gonna get the lock washer off of here so it's out of the way and I don't lose it. So here's a look at the nut and the lock washer. You can see, uh, you may be able to see right there is where I rounded off one of the points. Actually, the opposite one, too. Now, here's a look at what I had to do. I've got the, my big adjustable wrench here, and I ended up using this pipe. This is, I don't know, two feet long or so. And I keep this around just for special occasions. You can see this end has been sort of flattened and ovaled out, so it'll fit over wrenches and breaker bars, and it gives me some extra leverage. And with this, and putting my whole back and weight into it, I was able to crack that loose. But again, like I said, this loosened up a tiny bit on me on uh, one of the tries and I ended up rounding it over. So you really got to be careful when using a wrench like this. It's not really the ideal tool 
for this job, but it's what I had on hand, so I had to make do. So here's a look at the pitman arm with the nut removed. You can kind of see what it looks like here. I'm going to need to get the puller on here later, but there really isn't room. You can see this sway bar is in the way. The frame is in the way here. So I don't think the puller is going to fit on here without loosening up the steer bo uh, steering box, like I said before, and pivoting it out of the way. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is try and remove the other end of the pitman arm. So I'm going to get in here with a 22 millimeter socket and this old air ratchet. I'll say that again. Okay, I'm going to get in here with a 22 millimeter socket, or 21 millimeter socket rather, on my impact wrench, which is kind of leaking here, and see if we can get this off. Ah! Right, that came right off. So now what I'll do is try and pop that pitman arm out of the center link. And I'm just going to beat on it with a hammer. Now I don't care about this pitman arm anymore, so I can beat right on this stud, and if I ruin the threads or anything like that, it's not going to matter. Another thing to do would be to put a pickle fork up under here and kind of beat that in, uh, but I don't have a pickle fork, so I'm just going to try and do it this way and see what happens. As you can see, I've got a pickle fork ready to go. I actually borrowed this from my brother-in-law who lives next door. He happened to have a set of these and was uh, willing to let me use them. So I'm going to try this manually first with a hammer, although this does have an attachment that I can use with my air hammer. So, as you should be able to see, I finally was able to pop it loose there with this pickle fork, so that came in handy. But I had to go get my bigger hammer. I was just using too small of a hammer. Once I got on it with this thing, it popped right out. So, now we should be in good shape here to continue on with this. So the next thing that I need to do is take the bolts out that hold the steering box in. And there's three of them. There's one up here, one here, and one here. So I'm going to get the impact wrench fired up and just use that to pull these out. Although, I don't know, they may come out just fine with a regular ratchet, I'm not sure. But I'll try the impact wrench anyway. Okay, so while I was waiting for the compressor to spool up, I ended up putting my breaker bar on here and loosening these. But I'll take them the rest of the way off with the impact. Actually, I'm going to start with this one up here behind the splash pan since it's a little bit hard to get at. Alright, I'll try the second one now. This air gun really isn't working. Okay, so now once I take this last bolt out, this steering box is going to be free to move around a little bit. So I want to be a little careful with this one and make sure I support the weight of the steering box once I get this out. Okay, so now the steering box is free. And the steering box is now sort of hanging by the the um, lower steering shaft so it shouldn't go too far but I want to make sure I don't stretch or overextend any of the power steering lines that go to this thing. So I'm going to try and orient this in a way where I can get the pitman arm end so that I can get the puller on it. So let me do that and uh, we'll come back and try and pull this thing out of here. Here's a look at the pitman arm puller that I got. I got this on Rock Auto along with all of the other front end parts that I'm using on this job. Uh, so you can see I've already test fitted on the pitman arm. It does fit. Everything should work. Now I'm going to throw this up on the steering box and on the end of the pitman arm. But before I do that, I'm going to put a little grease in here just to help lubricate this a bit so that it doesn't mash up the end of the tool here as much as it might. So I've got the pitman arm puller on and I've got it snugged up by hand here. So I'm going to try a breaker bar on here first. 
All right, let's try the old standby pipe here and see what happens. something happening in there but I just don't know what it is so I've been working on this a bit and I had the long pipe on here and it sort of cracked loose and now I'm able to kind of turn it it doesn't really look like it's pulling the thing off but this is turning so I think it's working I'm just gonna keep working on it here it just feels really loose now Nope, it actually did pop it off. Okay, that took quite a bit of force, like I expected it would, but it didn't it didn't pop all the way off all at once like I thought it would. I thought it would kind of go pop and then come off, but it's just sort of slowly pulling itself off now. Let's try this now. So that should be now I just gotta wiggle things around here, get everything out of the way, and we should be good to go. It should be loose now, I would think. Yeah, well, let's see. Now, this is again where I just need three hands here. To... There we go. Sorry about that. And there. If that's visible in the camera there but there is the pitman arm off the truck okay so here's a look at the pitman arm that came out of the truck out here in the daylight I'm not sure if this is the original part or not or if this was replaced at one point but now that I've got it out of the truck and I'm kind of fooling around with it it's really not that bad there is a little bit of slop in it here uh, but it probably would have been fine for uh, a little while longer it probably would have lasted okay but I figured since I was going to be in here doing the tie rod ends, I would just go through the trouble to change this too, and the idler arm, and just do that all at once so that I know, or I knew everything was uh, up to snuff. So, like I said, there is just a little bit of play in this. Uh, it's not anything you're going to see in the camera or here, but I can kind of feel it here. Of course, I'm wiggling the camera as I move, but there is just a little bit of play there. That's going to wrap up removal of the pitman arm from this 2004 Tahoe. The next video in this series will document how I removed the idler arm and idler arm bracket from this truck. If you'd like to watch that video, I'll leave a link to it in the description below, and I'll leave a thumbnail in the end screen as well. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. Thank you for watching.